Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to take a look at the WinX HD video converter for Mac. Right now it's $35.99 from their website, and you can download it, and it allows you to convert a lot of different videos. They sent this to me to review, and I really appreciate it. I use it often now that I have the application, and I use it to convert and kind of compress all of my videos that go on YouTube. It does a pretty good job and it's very fast. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the options up here. Within options, we have a lot of different output types, which include iPads, iPhones, Apple TV, everything from BlackBerry and even Android phones. If we click on Android, we have different profiles. So as you can see, it's on Nexus One right now. We have a lot of different options. Some of them are older, but they basically give you a general idea of what type of file format to use. If we pick Droid, you can see it automatically selects the output file format, video resolution, video codec, frames, and everything else. Under audio language, we have options for different languages, and as this says, target file name. So you can rename your file, but that's just in the options. Let's go ahead and hit cancel here. Now when we want to create a video or convert a video, what we would do is here we have some videos I haven't uploaded yet of reviews for of reviews for YouTube. All I do is click and drag them in here and what we get is what codec it's in currently and the start and end times. We can rename the file and in the output folder, but basically you get the idea. So what we'll do is select what we want to use. Now as you can see we have a lot of different options. We have general video, Apple TV or Apple, and within Apple we can convert to different things. Uh, we have HD video, cell phone, Microsoft, you name it. So what I normally convert to because I use, we'll go to general video, what I normally go to is to YouTube because I want to upload to YouTube. And within the settings it auto selects the setting. I find the video quality is not of the quality I like to upload at 1000 kilobits per second so I changed that to 10,000 kilobits per second and it seems to do the job. As you can see here in the audio quality it's 128 kilobits per second with sample rates and you can select all of these it will change the volume across the the video and in the video quality again we have different options for your output image size, your frame rate, your output format, and your resolution. In this case I would want 1080 but we're not seeing that here. So what we need to do is simply click on HD video and then go to HD YouTube. Things are organized based on the type of video you want to do but it's basically all the same interface and again we'll do 10,000 and again keep aspect ratio. We don't want 720p we want 1080p. This is a new MacBook that has a quad-core i7 processor in it and as you can see it shows eight cores and that's because each core is double threaded. So what we can do is select how many cores we want to use. I want to use all of them. We can also do de-interlacing, high quality engine, force AV, AV sync and we have a lot of different options for everything. And because it uses all eight cores or eight threads it runs very fast and works really well. As an example, what you would see on something such as Final Cut that doesn't currently use all cores or understand how to use all the different threads, it will take a lot longer. But if we hit start here, you'll see it says waiting, frames per second kicks up, it says 2 minutes and 28 seconds, and that's for a 13 minute video to convert from 1080p to a different file format in 1080p. It's extremely fast, and I know a lot of people have moved away from Final Cut for that reason. Here's an output folder of where I've placed other objects or other movies. And it's very fast and utilizes all those cores, unlike Final Cut, where a lot of people have moved away from Final Cut to Premiere and that sort of thing. Uh, they are supposed to use it in the newer version, but for now, when I want to convert something, I use this because it's so fast. And it seems to do a very good job. And like I said, you can change the video quality. If you're not happy with 10,000 kilobits per second, you can up that or lower it. It's up to you. So it's basically a video converter. It does a really nice job at what it's designed to do. As you can see, it's a very nice simple video converter that we can do a couple different things with snapshots and that sort of thing but it's basically 
I want to convert a video file to another format, and that's what it does. And it does it well, and it does it really fast. The only problems I've seen is when you output from Final Cut, not making it a single file, but making a, a file that's a reference file that links to all the different objects. This program will crash when you try and actually output a file from that. When you drag your file into here, it will crash. That's the only issue I've seen. But since a lot of people don't output just to a reference file and to a normal video file, this shouldn't be a problem for the majority of users. But if you're trying to do that specifically, mm -hmm. at least this version, of which I believe is the current version from them, crashes and can't handle the file. For whatever reason, it doesn't see the other parts of the reference file, and I think it doesn't know how to handle it, and it just gives up and crashes. So that's pretty much it. Now, if you have any questions or any uses that you've used this for that you find to be very helpful, please comment below. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. We'll see you next time.